In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, we come together to celebrate the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our Mass intention today is for the people of our parish, for you, the people of Epiphany. And as we come together, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on, the, on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. 
On that day I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe, and gird him with your sash, and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot, to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and love. I thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and love. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. For you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? 
Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. A few years ago, I was traveling, and I had forgotten the book that I was reading at home. And so I found myself in the store at the airport looking for something to take with me on the plane to read. Taking the recommendation of the clerk, I purchased a book. It was the story of two brothers, two brothers coping with the death of their mother and with their family's histrionics. One of the brothers was always trying to find an escape. He was always trying to escape his own life. And over the course of the novel, he comes to realize how shallow his life had become. At one point in the story, he remarks, the moment matters more than the future. The present today, tonight, the sensation of walking into a room and creating a real, if fleeting, hush is what I care about. It's all right with me if I leave nothing behind. You see, he isn't worried about future generations or what contributions he can make. He isn't worried about bringing light or joy or peace or anything into the world. As he said, it's all right if I leave nothing behind. There's something to be said about the focus on the here and now. The saints are often reminding us how the present moment is all we can offer to God. Even as anxieties about the past and the future press in upon us. The Gospels encapsulate that truth when Jesus asks us, to trust in God's providence and his care. The character, however, is not embracing a focus on the present or on mindfulness of the moment. Instead, his focus is me-centered, centered on himself. How often can we say the same about ourselves? He's given himself permission to ignore what is going on around him and focus only on himself. The gospel asks us to embrace a totally different view of the world. As Christians, we are called to live for the future in the present. We are asked to be aware of what it is we are leaving behind. In our gospel today, we read, we and re-encountered St. Peter's great profession of faith. You are the Christ, Son of the living God. And we hear Jesus say to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. And amen, I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. For us as Catholics, this passage from Matthew's Gospel forms the foundation for our belief in the primacy, the authority of the Pope, the Vicar of Christ, the Bishop of Rome, the servants of the servants of God, the successor of St. Peter. But on a more basic level, this Gospel passage marks a pivotal moment in the lives of Peter and the Apostles 
and all of us who are followers of Christ. We know from the gospel stories how Peter's personality gets in the way sometimes, often like our own. We know that when it seems to matter most, he denies that he even knows Jesus. Peter doesn't always get it right. But at the end of the day, it isn't Peter's character or achievements that make him a rock. Instead, it's Peter's strength that comes from his faith in Jesus, and his faith is more than intellectual knowledge. His faith is his relationship with Jesus. When he confesses that Jesus is the Christ, Peter is speaking out of his own deep, loving, and personal knowledge of who Christ is. This should give each one of us hope. Hope that we too can encounter that relationship with Christ. Despite his faults, we do eventually see Peter and all of the apostles fulfill their mission in the ministry after Pentecost. They shepherd the early church through persecutions, internal divisions, scandals, growing pains, and theological exploration. Sound familiar? They left a legacy of faith. They lived their lives looking forward to the future. They were aware of what it was they were leaving behind. Their mission of building the church continues today, and we are part of that mission. The way we live this present moment and engage the challenges and possibilities and the promises of the future will shape the lives of those who come after us of your children and your grandchildren. Part of our offering of faith, part of our living this faith, is being mindful that our acts and our omissions have an impact on those who come after us. Living only for our own present isn't an option. Just as we have been the beneficiaries of the prayer and the, great, the work of the great saints, and generations of nameless, holy men and women, we have been entrusted with the responsibility to live for the future, to build the church here on earth. How this takes shape in our lives reveals itself in our prayer and discernment, and especially how we actively engage in our faith and the world around us. The point of all of this is that we recognize how much we have received by those who were concerned about what they left behind and how we are called to do more and be more for the generations who, come, who came before us because they have inherit, we have inherited so much from them. As Pope Francis often reminds us, every baptized person is called to offer Jesus his or her own faith, albeit poor but sincere, so that Jesus can continue to build his church today in every part of the world. Living for the future is hard, and so is living our lives for the sake of others. But engaging in this hard work, we find our salvation. Let us never cease building Christ's church in our own hearts and in the hearts of all we encounter. It is through those encounters, it is through those relationships that we continue to build the church of God here on earth upon the rock that is Peter. And the gates of the nether netherworld shall not prevail against him. Amen. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the Father's love for us, we present our needs to him. For Pope Francis, that as Peter's successor, he may continue to build up the universal church upon the rock of Christ's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation and communities, that gospel values may continue to guide and fortify its leaders and people so that we may experience the stability of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For public leaders, civil servants, and health professionals, that they may be inspired, strengthened, and protected as they serve us in these trying times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For educators, students, and school parents, that as they journey through this new school year, they may have a spirit of wonder and openness as they anticipate new lessons and new settings. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially those afflicted by COVID-19, and all the suffering, particularly those of our parish community, that they may find healing, hope, and help in their afflictions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially our deceased parishioners, relatives, and friends, that they may partake in the fullness of paradise, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, who have built your church upon the rock of St. Peter's faith, grant that nothing may cause our faith to waver or to fail, for you live and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gain for yourself a people by, ad by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with bless, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, Enrique, his assistant Bishop, the order of bishops, the, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you from their passing, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. On your day, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For our final prayer, I ask that you please continue to pray for all of our students, teachers, and our families that as they've finished the first week of school virtually, uh, that they continue to receive the graces that they will need moving forward with the school year. And as we encounter the obstacles that will face us, but know that we continue to keep our students, teachers, and their families in our prayers. And we ask that you please do the same. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, our Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.